Hi guys, Ms. Francis here to discuss our new unit, which is Mendelian Genetics. Um, just like our last unit, this unit has a lot of vocabulary, so hopefully by the end of this video you'll be able to understand and define these vocabulary words. Before we jump into Mendelian Genetics, let's just revisit some important vocabulary words from last unit. We have homologous chromosomes. And within your chromosomes, you have DNA. DNA contains hundreds to thousands of genes where the gene that codes for a certain trait has a particular locus or location. Now, alleles are different versions of that gene. So, for example, if I got this chromosome from dad and this chromosome from mom, the gene that codes for height is located at the same place on both of those chromosomes. However, the alleles might be different. So for example, if this is the gene that codes for the trait of height, maybe I got the tall allele from dad, but the short allele from mom. If I was to look at the gene that codes for eye color, notice how it's located at the same place on dad's chromosome and mom's chromosome when we're discussing homologous pairs, but maybe from dad, I get the allele for brown eyes and from mom, I get the allele for blue eyes. So how do we get these alleles in the first place? Well, the alleles come from differences in nucleotide bases. And it can be as simple as one difference in a nucleotide base, which gives you a different allele. Um, we are going to learn that we use different letters to represent the different alleles. So let's talk about Mendel. Who was he? Mendel was a monk and he enjoyed botany as well as math, i.e. statistics. Um, he had a lot of patience which enabled him to study peas extensively and then he applied his math background to those peas and ended up developing what's now known as our current genetics. Therefore, he's known as the father of genetics. Originally, scientists believed in this blending hypothesis where the genetic material contributed by each parent mixes kind of how paint mixes, i.e. if I had brown eyes from mom and blue eyes from dad, I would get blue-brown eyes in the offspring. Just like paint, if I had blue paint and yellow paint, it would blend to make green. However, Mendel proposed an alternative model where he said that parents pass on discrete heritable units that retain their separate identities and offspring. Now, we currently call those discrete heritable units genes. Mendel didn't refer to them as genes. He had minimal knowledge at this point of genes, DNA, chromosomes, but he knew that it wasn't the blending. Um, hypothesis. So what he did was used plant peas. And why did he use plant peas? Well, first of all, it's available in many varieties and it has distinct observable features. Unbeknownst to him, each characteristic had a different allele and that these characteristics only had two versions or two alleles. So in that way, he was fortunate. Um, furthermore, Mendel was able to control the mating of the plants. He would remove the stamen and the pistil, which are the sex organs, and then force whichever plants to mate to mate. So what did his experiment include? It included what he called the true breeding parents, also known as the P generation or the parents generation. Then you've got the hybrid offspring of the P generation, the F1 generation. So those are the offspring of the parents, the P generation. The F2 generation is then the offspring of the F1 generation. So what did Mendel do? Well, what he did was he took purple flowers 
and crossed them with white flowers. And if the blending theory were correct, he would have gotten light purple flowers, but that is not what he got. He got purple flowers, what he started out with, and every single one of them, every single one of the F1 offspring were purple flowers, not that light purple flower. So that debunked the blending theory. Then he took those F1 generation, so the hybrids, the ones that came from the purple and the white, and what he found was that the trait that was hidden in the F1 generation, i.e. that white color, reappeared. So he wondered why that happened. And what he developed were the terms known as dominant and recessive. Whereas because the purple flower masked the white flower, it was known as the dominant trait. Whereas the white trait, which was absent in the F1 generation, but then reappeared in the F2 generation, is called recessive where he discovered that the results appeared in a three to one ratio of purple to white flowers. In other words, a three to one ratio of the dominant characteristic to the recessive characteristic. So Mendel actually looked at seven different traits. He looked at flower color, flower position, seed color, seed shape, pod shape, pod color, and stem length. And if you notice, there's only one dominant characteristic for each of these traits and one recessive characteristic for each of these traits. But when um, Mendel did his experiments, he always came up with that three to one ratio in the F2 generation. So there was a three to one ratio for every trait. So what he concluded was that variations are due to different genes. He didn't know that they were called genes at the time. He just called them heritable characteristics, where different versions of a gene are called alleles. Again, Mendel called them factors. The different alleles vary in the sequence of nucleotides at the specific locus of a gene. So what gives you the different alleles is those different sequences of nucleotides at the location of that gene that's coding for that um, trait. So for example, if I were to look at the purple flower allele and the white flower allele, those are two different versions of flower color. So the allele for color is located at the same place on homologous pairs of chromosomes. Now, there's certain nomenclature to describe these different alleles, which we'll get into, but for example, a capital P could be used for the dominant flower color, and in this example, it would be purple, whereas the lowercase letter P could represent the recessive flowers trait. In this example, that would be white. Mendel also concluded that how would an organism get two alleles? Well, one came from mom, one came from dad, where the combination of the alleles can be either homozygous or heterozygous. A homozygous combination means that I have identical alleles. A heterozygous combination of alleles means that you have different alleles. So what does the trait look like if there's both a dominant and a recessive allele? Well, the trait that's expressed, the one that is going to be in the organism's appearance is the dominant allele, where the recessive allele has no noticeable effect on that organism's appearance. Mendel therefore developed the law of segregation, where he said that two alleles for each characteristic or trait, segregate, hence the law of segregation. To segregate means to separate during gamete production. And this law corresponds to what we learned in meiosis regarding the distribution of homologous chromosomes to different gametes. Um, 
Finally, Mendel's law of segregation accounts for that three to one ratio that he observed in the F2 generation where I've got three dominant um, traits expressed versus one recessive trait that's expressed. So next time we're going to get into Punnett squares and crosses and what words such as phenotype and genotype mean. Um, but for now, let's end with the law of segregation.